Boom! Oh! That was actually a boom. Hey, what's up guys? So as you know, Hu Tao came out and she's really strong. So today I want to make a video talking about her. First of all, my thoughts on her very quickly. I think she's a great DPS uh, and can be a burst support, but especially a great DPS. And she's super powerful even at C0. Now her first constellation is very good and makes her a lot stronger, but even with no constellations, she's a very strong character as you guys will see throughout the showcase. And so in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about how to play her, uh, how to build her and all that. The how to play her part is a bit longer this time because there is a lot of nuance to her and her charge attacks and animation cancel and all that. So that's gonna be at the start and right after that, um, is the build. We're going to talk about artifacts, weapons, literally everything, and I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible while still being detailed because there's a lot to cover in this video. At some points, the UID is covered because it is an Asia account, it is in my main account, and I didn't want to just leak it. But apart from that, I really hope you guys enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, follow me on Twitch if you want. I stream almost every night. That being said, let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is Hu Tao's talents, like her abilities, and how to use her. Basically, what's really particular about Hu Tao is that you usually want to be under 50% HP, uh, because of a few things, notably her talent, which you unlock at level 60 out of 70, right? You ascend past 60, and it gives you 33% increased power damage bonus, which is pretty good. And also your burst basically does a lot more damage when you're under 50% HP. Uh, it goes from 400% scaling at level 6 to 499, which is pretty significant. So because of that, shields and stuff are a lot more valuable on Hu Tao and can be very nice so that you can stay under 50%. Her other passive gives crit rate to all your party members other than Hu Tao, so your off-field supports and just your other party members. What this means is that your, your supports are just going to get buffed. It's like a Wolf's Gravestone effect for them, uh, and it's really, really nice because buffing the crit rate of your off-field supports, like Xing Chu, who's really good with Hu Tao, will increase his DPS by a lot, making your overall team damage um, just higher. In terms of her actual abilities and like normal attacks, the first thing you should know is that her charge attacks are really good um, and you can cancel them and I'm going to talk about how to use it in a little bit, but first of all I just want to say that her charge attacks are really really good. So there's a, a few optimal combos, it seems like basically spamming charge attacks, like a normal attack into a charge attack is really high DPS and it seems to be the best, especially at C1 if you can spam it. However, you do lose a lot of stamina that way, and if you're dodging between attacks and stuff, you can't be charge attacking the whole duration of your E. You can sometimes pull it off if you're like shielded or if you're just not dodging, you're not dash canceling basically. Um, but just as a general rule, you do need to weave in some attacks between your charge attacks if you don't have her constellation one because it costs too much stamina. We're gonna talk more about this in a bit, but for now let's talk about her E. Her E is pretty huge, it's just really, really good. It's a bit like Child's E, whereas you don't want to be attacking out of it. Like, I'll basically never normal attack on Hu Tao unless my E's active. It gives you an attack bonus based on your max HP, and it converts your damage to Pyro, which is just massive. On top of that, when you charge attack, it applies Blood Blossom to the enemy, which is just like a damage over time of Pyro damage, and it's really good. Um, and doing that, basically that's another reason why you should be charge attack spamming. So as I said, it is like child's E, as in if you swap or something, the E ends. Basically you want to maximize its uptime and be only attacking on Hu Tao when you do have uh, your, your skill active. So if you are noticing that there's downtime, you could consider running supports to fill in the gaps like a quick swap team or someone that can basically spam abilities or DPS while her E is on cooldown. Her elemental burst is just pretty nuts. Um, it's one of the higher scalings, like level six, you can see here 500% scaling under 50% HP. When we look at my Deluke who's level eight talents, it's only 300 on the first hit. Now yes, Deluke has other hits, but I'm just trying to show that like the initial hit, the one hit will be much higher on Hu Tao. That's why you'll see bigger numbers. Also, this ability does heal you and only costs 60 energy. And the energy you gain on your E is actually very, very high. Um, it does generate a lot of particles. So this energy cost isn't really a big deal. Um, and it, as I said, it does heal you, which is nice. And the main thing you should know about this is that you should always use it uh, under two conditions. First of all, you should always use it when you're under 50% HP if you can, because it heals you more and it gives you more damage. And more importantly, you should always use it when your elemental skill, your E is active, because this gives you a bunch of attack, right? So if you use your Q without that attack bonus, it will deal much less damage than if you had your elemental skill active. And before I show you guys like animation cancels and cool stuff about her charge attacks, I just wanna say the talent priority for Hu Tao uh, first of all, normal attacks and ease are actually pretty close in terms of importance. So you would level one after the other instead of like stacking into one. Um, that being said, the order and uh, shout out to Zajef77 for the math on this is normal attack first and then E. Uh, and if you're running her, this is for main DPS, obviously. As a burst support, obviously your burst is important. Uh, but talent priority for a main DPS Hu Tao is normal attack, then E, and then your burst third. So I want to talk about her um, basically animation cancelling and how to use her charge attack and stuff. First of all, with her charge attack, you'll notice that uh, the attack comes out very fast and you 
rush through enemies, which can be very annoying because it displaces you, right? And it can be annoying. There are a few ways to get around it though. Like you can dash cancel the charge attack. Uh, you can jump cancel it. And while jump canceling, I guess the main purpose of it is just to not dash through the enemy, to not basically get displaced a huge amount and then have to turn around and do it again. Uh, dash canceling lets you do it a lot faster, but the problem with dash canceling is that it's, it only really becomes viable at constellation 1. Uh, you can do it before then, but if you don't have the stamina reduction, but basically with C1 you can actually dash cancel your charge attacks without having to worry about your stamina. And regarding jump canceling your charge attacks, there's something I want to show you guys. Basically you can do it very early. Now I don't know if you guys saw that, basically if you look right here at the last jump cancel I do, you can see that that's a charge attack, but you barely even saw the animation. Let me play it back again. I did a charge attack there, the number appeared, but you barely even saw me do the charge attack. And so what I basically wanna show you guys is that, yes, that that's, it's hard to get it like frame perfect, but just overall, um, you can cancel your, you can jump cancel your charge attacks very early if you do want to. And so an important thing to know about her charge attack, and we're gonna talk more about this in the party comp section, but basically her charge attack has no internal cooldown, which means it can apply pyro every single time you charge attack. And what's so good about that is that when you pair her with someone like Xing Chu, uh, or in like mouth comps, but especially reverse vaporizing with Xing Chu, it means that you can vaporize on every single charge attack because there's no internal cooldown uh, on your charge attacks. Keep in mind your normal attacks do have a small one, but your charge attacks don't. So what that looks like is that here, uh, and keep in mind I don't have any artifacts on my Hu Tao here, so the damage will be low, but every single charge attack I do will be vaporizing here. And so what that means is that spamming charge attack with her is very, very good because as I said, there's no internal cooldown. So you can constantly, constantly apply pyro, constantly vaporize, uh, or even proc melt depending on your team comps. So we're going to talk about Hu Tao's gear now. The first thing we're going to talk about is Hu Tao's best artifact sets because this is a question that comes up a lot. And while there are many viable sets, I would highly recommend overall the Witches set, the Crimson Witch of Flames, as the best set pretty much by far if you're using reactions. What I mean is if you're spamming like Vaporize or Melt, um, and we're going to talk about this in the party setup, I would like talk about how good like Hu Tao Xing Chu is, but basically Crimson Witcher Flames is usually the set you want to go with, especially if you're using uh, reactions. Now, if you aren't spamming reactions, there are other good sets. Like you can use Lava Walker. It is viable uh, if, you know, as I said, you're not using like Xing Chu and other sets uh, like for Bolide. And you'll forgive me, uh, this is my Asia account, so I don't have every set, but for Bolide, which gives you 40% increased damage if you're shielded to your attacks, um, can be nice. And for Hydro seems like a meme, but is actually pretty good on Hu Tao just because of the 30% increased damage to your normal attacks and charge attacks. However, overall, I think Lava Walker is pretty good, but the best, uh, especially if you're like spamming reactions, is Crimson Witch of Flames because it's so, so good. Um, even though you can't stack uh, the four piece set, right? You can't get the three stacks on it. It doesn't matter because the pyro damage bonus that you get plus the one bonus um, of the four piece, right? It basically increases a two piece bonus by 50%. So another 50% of the 15. Um, and on top of that, it increases your vaporize and melt damage. And that is huge because when you run Hu Tao with Xing Chu, you're gonna be vaporizing every single charge attack. Let's talk about your artifact stats now. First of all, I have to say you want HP on your sands. Um, and, and while it may be tempting to get something like elemental mastery for reactions or attack or whatever, HP percent is just a way to go with Hu Tao for sure because of the way her scaling works. And just like her whole kit, uh, is designed around it, so you definitely want HP% percent on the sands, it's just the best. For your goblet, you want pyro damage bonus if you can get it, um, for sure, because basically all your damage is going to be pyro, right? Your E converts your attacks into pyro, so you definitely want pyro damage if you can. For your circlet, you want either crit rate or crit damage, depending on what you need. Her ascension passive is crit damage, and if you have something like Staff of Homa, which gives you more crit damage, you might especially want a crit rate hat. Um, but rate and damage both work. Just try to get a nice one to two ratio. So two damage for every one crit rate as a general rule. Keep in mind, crit on the circlet is better than HP. So definitely go for crit over HP. And I feel like I should mention uh, for the substats, you're looking for about the same thing. Obviously crit rate and damage are great, but HP percent is also good too. And uh, if you're spamming reactions, elemental mastery is always nice. For Hu Tao's weapons, there are a lot of good ones. I'm going to be sure to cover all of them so you guys know what's the best one for you. First of all, I want to say if you have the Staff of Homa, it is just the best one by far. It's clearly a weapon that was like made for her. It's so, so strong. If you don't know what Staff of Homa does, basically it has a huge crit damage stat. And on top of that, it has a really, really strong effect, which gives you more damage, more attack based on your HP. And if you're under 50% HP, which is something that you want to be uh, as Hu Tao, right? You want to be under 50% HP if you can it gives you even more attack. So just overall, Staff of Homa on Hu Tao will out DPS every other weapon. 
um, even when it's at refinement 1. And it's definitely the strongest choice if you have it. Now obviously not everyone has Staff of Homa, but don't worry, there's a lot of other good options. J-Wing Spear can be good for DPS as like another 5 star, but for 4 stars, uh, Deathmatch is really really good and comparable to Jade Spear. It gives you a very high crit rate, really good effect, and the low base attack doesn't matter that much on Hu Tao, since she cares more about HP percent than attack. If you're spamming Vaporize and running Hu Tao with Xing Chu, Dragon's Bane is an insane option, and what we've been theorycrafting uh, <laughs> from the start. Basically, her charge attack doesn't have any internal cooldown on Pyro application, and just the way she works, you can spam Vaporize constantly, and this Dragon's Bane, uh, even at R1, is very, very good, and at R5, it becomes insane. And uh, overall, I like Deathmatch because it gives you crit rate. It's a lot easier to get a good crit rate to damage ratio with Deathmatch, but Dragon's Bane uh, can't out DPS it, especially at high refinement. Keep in mind, it depends on your team comp, but with Xing Chu, uh, you can basically always have the passive up. Now for the free to play options, it's kind of sad because they are a lot worse than the like better options like Deathmatch or good four stars or Homa if you have them. But if you do need a good free to play option, uh, I would say the best ones are the tassels, white and black tassel. Uh, but the best overall is the White Tassel. Um, like, Black Tassel is good against slimes and stuff, but overall, White Tassel gives you crit rate and uh, helps your normal attack combos. If you do weave in normal attacks in your combos, um, it's just very good overall. And it is better than the Blacksmith options. Now, I am C0 because I wasted all my money on the rigged weapon banner, but I do want to talk about constellations for Hutao because they are important. In my opinion, her Constellation 1 is a huge, huge uh, upgrade to her, a huge DPS increase, and it's really worth getting if you do uh, want it, because what it does is it lets you spam your charge attack without consuming stamina when you're in your E, your elemental skill. What that means is that you effectively do more damage because you can constantly spam charge attacks, and basically at C0, you can still spam charge attacks, but you can't like dash cancel them, and you can't You'll run out of stamina eventually, especially if you have to dodge uh, enemies. Like, think of the current Abyss 12, the Geovishaps constantly jumping on you. Even with, like, a regular character that doesn't charge attack, you'll usually run out of stamina or pretty close to it. And when you are charge attacking, it becomes really hard to spam that uh, in difficult places like Abyss 12, unless you have your C1. If you have your C1, this solves that problem completely and effectively increases your DPS by letting you spam charge attack and even dash cancel your charge attacks. The other constellations are actually pretty good. Uh, I still think C1 is her best, like by far, but the other ones are pretty good. C2 is a nice damage increase. Three and five increase your levels, so they're pretty good. Um, four basically is like her passive. It, it'll buff your party members, uh, give them more crit rate, which is pretty good. And her C6 is weird. Uh, I'm gonna explain it quickly, but basically it's really, really strong for a burst support Hu Tao. Because what it does is when you're under 25% HP or you die, like you suffer a lethal strike, uh, it'll give you resistances and 100% crit rate, which means you'll always crit uh, for the next 10 seconds. However, this only occurs every 60 seconds. So the way I would explain this is that it's really good for a burst support Hu Tao because you can swap in uh, and every time this procs, you'll just crit 100% of the time and deal way more damage because you can build more crit damage. So very good constellation in that regard. Uh, but for a main DPS Hu Tao, it's still good, it's still definitely good, right? But it's only active one-sixth of the time, right? 10 seconds out of every 60 seconds. So for a main DPS, it's still really good, but it's not as big as people say it is. I still think this is an overhyped constellation, unless you are a burst support Hu Tao. So it's good, but it's not like game-breaking for main DPS Hu Tao. Now we're going to talk about Hu Tao's party comps. The first thing I want to say is that her best support is Xing Chu, who is also available on her banner and in the Star Glitter shop. Now, I know some people don't want to play Xing Chu or don't like him. I will give alternatives, but I do want to make it clear that he is definitely her best support. Um, and you can run Hu Tao as both a Vaporize carry and or a Melt carry. And if you are running a Melt team, you still want to run Xing Chu for his Rain Swords with another crowd character, uh, ideally Kea. And then what you can do is basically just spam both their bursts, and then your Hu Tao will be alternating between Vaporize and Melt. Um, now, one of her biggest downsides is that Hu Tao is very good at single target, very, very strong as a single target DPS, but does have the weakness uh, of being sort of lackluster against a lot of enemies. Her damage is a lot better, like, single target. So team comp wise, definitely Xing Chu. Uh, we talked about this in the intro. There's no internal cooldown on Hu Tao's charge attacks. You can constantly vaporize. The rain swords around you, when you dash into them, will apply hydro. On top of that, when you attack, his burst will apply hydro, then you can reverse vaporize, do it twice before the hydro element is removed, and it's just a ton of damage. 
for a mouth carry, as I mentioned, you can also run Kea with Xingqiu. Very, very strong. And then if you do that, the last slot could be a few different characters. Uh, I know some people run Hu Tao builds without healers, like Hu Tao comps without healers. And if your shield is strong enough, and if you find that it works for you, that can work. I personally like having a healer. For me, I find it necessary, but uh, it does depend on the team comp. Uh, I like running Diona a lot in this team. If you are running a team comp like this, where Hu Tao is sort of a mouth carry, you know, alter can alternate between mouth and vaporize. Diona gives you the cryo resonance, which is very, very good for the crit rate. And on top of that, she gives you a nice shield. So if you're low HP, you can stay low HP. You can stay under 50% if you want to, and she can heal you as well. I think overall, just for general teams, Diona is one of the better healers for Hu Tao. My favorite personally, I really like her for Hu Tao because she gives you a nice shield and can heal you uh, just as much as you need. And on top of that, Diona is really good because her shield actually gives you stamina reduction. Basically, when you're shielded, uh, your stamina consumption is decreased by 10%, which means you can spam even more charge attacks. Barbara can be a free-to-play alternative to this if you don't have Diona because she does also reduce your stamina consumption uh, when you're in her E. But uh, personally, I recommend Diona if you have her. Do keep in mind, however, that Bennett is still good. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Bennett has counter synergy with Hu Tao, and that's true. Bennett will heal you over 50%, and that is bad on paper, but Bennett is such a good unit that he's still good with Hu Tao because of how good he is. However, I would not recommend running Bennett with Hu Tao, uh, especially in places like Abyss. I would rather, I would recommend you run Bennett in another Abyss team, right? He's still good with Hu Tao, so you can use him for the uh, Pyro Resonance and the damage bonus from his ult, because usually that'll outweigh the damage bonus you gain from being under 50% HP. But I would recommend using Bennett in your other team uh, and using a healer like Diona with Hu Tao. Jean can also be good for Viridescent, uh, you know, because Anemo supports in general are pretty good. Now keep in mind, while Venti and Sucrose are still very good with Hu Tao, Sucrose gives Elemental Mastery uh, and can proc Viridescent Venerer, it is very difficult to proc Viridescent Venerer with Hu Tao. If you guys don't know what Viridescent Venerer does, basically it reduces the enemy, um, the, the resistance of enemies by the element you swirl. Now that's really, really good, but it's very hard to swirl Pyro. So you might have to end up swirling Hydro to buff your Shang-Chu or something, but it's just very difficult to swirl Pyro uh, when you're running Kutao, because Kutao can't just apply Pyro and then swap because it's basically only with her E or her burst and her E has a very long cooldown. That being said, Zhongli shines exceptionally well with Hutao. I, I think he's one of the best characters for her, honestly. He's so strong. Not only is Zhongli a good unit in general, but he shields you, which is great uh, because you want to stay low HP. And on top of that, he reduces enemy resistances uh, for every element, including Pyro and including Hydro, which will buff your Xingqiu and your Hu Tao. And honestly, in a comp with Xing Chu's Rain Swords, which heal you and give you resistance, and Hu Tao's Burst, which heals you, and Zhongli's Shield, you might actually be able to get away with not running a healer. Uh, but then again, it does depend. Okay, now if you're not running Xing Chu, because he's really good with Hu Tao, but I know a lot of people don't want to run him or don't like him or whatever, and in Genshin, you should play who you like. So that being said, if you don't want to run Xing Chu, you can run something like Shang Ling, who's really good, it gives you Pyro Resonance, and uh, lets you run Lava Walker, because Witch is the best set, right? Crimson Witch is very good. But if you're not running Reactions, if you're not spamming Vaporize, if you're not spamming Melt, other sets are actually better than Crimson Witch of Flames. So you can run something like Lava Walker with Hu Tao Shang Ling, which can be really good. On top of that, Shang Ling's Constellation 1 uh, gives, basically reduces Pyro Resistance of enemies, which is very, very nice uh, for your Hu Tao and obviously for Shang Ling as well. You can also run Fischl and there's like turbo comps and stuff if you want, but uh, I think Fischl can work well if you're not spamming reactions. So Fischl with Xing Chu can mess up your Vaporize spam, but in a team comp like this, when you're not running Vaporize, Fischl is actually a really good unit. You can do something like Fischl, Shang Ling, Hu Tao, and your last character can be like Bandit or something. There is also a full melt comp without Xing Chu you can run, which is uh, Kea and Ganyu as like a double cryo support for your Hu Tao. Uh, and I've seen this comp work, but I personally run Xing Chu with my Hu Tao. So at the end of the day, I recommend running Hu Tao with reactions like Vaporize and or Melt, um, and Xing Chu is usually her best support. However, as I said, play who you like, and there are many ways to uh, build a comp around Hu Tao and still make her good because she is a very strong unit. Now we're gonna do a DPS showcase, guys, so you get to see my Hu Tao in action. Just to show you guys uh, my attributes, because you always ask, 75 to 33, and my talents are level 7, and my constellation is 0. Let's get right into it. Get off the darkest ground. 
Gravity pulls you straight down Earth from a bird's eye view You should grow feathers and see this too When you want to get Boom! Oh! That was actually a boom. <laughs> I like the boom! Oh! That was actually a boom! <laughs> So overall, I think Kutao is really strong, like really strong as a DPS. Gets a lot better at C1, but even at C0, she's super strong. Like all the clips in this video, all my testing has been done at C0. I think she's very good um, and has a lot of potential. But uh, the general consensus, even among like three theory crafters, is that she is very good. And I personally love her playstyle. I really like Polar users, so I'm happy that she's very good. If there's anything I want to add to this video, or if I forgot anything, I'm going to do so in a pinned comment, but the video is getting pretty long, and I don't want to waste your guys' time. And as I said in the intro, I stream almost every night on Twitch. Link's in the description if you're interested. Also, like, 80% of my viewers aren't subs, so subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's okay too, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.